Hey guys, Pete here, and we got another knife review for you today, guys. Today we have the Kershaw Leak by Ken Onion. As always, let's start you guys out with some basic specs here. We have an overall length of 7 inches, a blade length of 3 inches. That blade is Sandvik 14C28N. It is Warncliffe style, so you can see it drops down almost completely flat, but with a nice little belly, very small belly, but a belly nonetheless. Uh, it has a bead blast stainless steel handle. The total weight is 3 ounces. Uh, it is assisted with the patented speed safe system. A uh, personal favorite of mine as far as assisted knives go. Uh, it has a locking mechanism, which uh, I believe is unique to Ken Onion's uh, design here with the speed safe. Very, very simplistic. All it is is, there we go. A little piece of plastic that slides either in front of or out of the way of the blade and that's all you need to stop that and it's very nice to have on an assisted knife though personally I've never had an issue with one of Kenangan's knives deploying without intent uh, but it is a nice option to have all right so let's get down to it guys shall we first off overall impressions style wise love it simplistic yet elegant as uh, most of Ken Onion's stuff is, though some of his gets a little more fancy, but the leak is very, very simplistic, and I like that. Now, I have the bead blast finished here, but guys, the leak is so insanely popular. There are, without exaggeration, dozens and dozens of styles and combinations you have as far as handle and blade material, handle and blade uh, coatings, um, just dozens and dozens of options there, guys. This is pretty much the bare bones basic package that I don't think will ever sell out. But um, you should keep your eyes open because there are some awesome, awesome choices out there, guys. Now, like I said, it's the basic model, so it flows nicely, matches well, and it's just an average, everyday kind of knife. Uh, you know, not too gaudy, not too showy, but it gets the job done. Uh, now, the blade style is nice and effective, which is most important here. It looks good, but it gets the job done. This blade is, let's see, hollow ground. Oh, actually, nope, sorry, I stand corrected. That blade is flat ground, which is fine. Gives a little bit more strength considering it's such a thin blade. There you go. Uh, and <laughs> guys, this thing was insanely sharp out of the box. It was not only sharp enough for paper, which I'll show you real quick. Just precision slicing as slow as you want. But guys, this was sharp enough to shave with. Without exaggeration, sharp enough to shave, to shave with. And I've got the patchless marks on my arms and legs to prove it. Um, it wasn't a smooth shave by any means, but it was sharp enough to shave hair. That's pretty impressive for straight out of the box. I literally got it yesterday. That was the first test I did with it. Worked beautifully. Uber, uber impressed. And just like the Rippler review I did not too long ago, that tip is insane how thin that gets. You practically can't even see, in fact, I don't think you can see on camera all the way to the end of that tip. But it just, I mean, it's literally an exacto knife. It's insane. So incredibly impressed. Could not be happier with that straight out of the box. Now, you've got nice kind of minimalistic labeling. You've just got KAI, which is the parent company for Kershaw. Uh, Ken Onion Design, 1660, which is the model number. Uh, nothing on this side. You've got Kershaw speed safe down here so subtle logo placement nothing too you know in your face but just enough to get the brand out there nice little uh, engraving on the pocket clip there nice and classy as always and let's talk about that pocket clip for a second shall we you have options it is right side only unfortunately so sorry left-handers but right side only but it is both tip up and tip down carry. I have mine set up for tip down carry currently as that's my personal preference. Um, and the main difference that you need to know as far as which you would like to do is that when you have this in your pocket, the way I have it now is tip down, that's about what's going to show out of the edge of your knife. Now if you have it tip up carry, that's what's going to be popping out of the, your uh, pocket there. So it is a noticeable difference. It's a relatively deep carry if you have it set up as I do here. Uh, but again, personal preference as far as deployment. 
Now, speaking about deployment, that beautiful, beautiful speed safe system in there. Oh god, I love it. Ready? There it goes. Lightning fast. Couldn't ask for better. Um, there is a little spring internally in this back spacer here that's hiding it. Uh, and it just works great. Now, remember guys, assisted, not automatic. So this is legal in a lot of places, regardless of what you might think. Always double check your laws, of course, because there is a spring in here, and unfortunately some places go a little bit crazy. I'm located in Jersey, and we're notorious for pretty much the worst knife laws, but this is still technically legal. Now, we have relatively flow-through design, besides this one spacer here, but kind of necessary because of where the spring is. You have a non-tubed lanyard hole, which, I mean, I never put lanyards on my knives, but if you want to, you have the option. Uh, ergonomics and comfort, perfect. Like I said, sleek, but functional and stylish. It fits in the hand beautifully. You have yeah, a nice little troil there for your finger, and it locks in perfectly. You could choke up if you wanted to, but just note there isn't really a troil there to stop you from going up onto the blade. So if you do put your finger there, be wary. But you wouldn't really need to because on the top of the blade here, you've got this tiny little indent, which is perfect. So just rest your thumb in the normal position and really be able to get into whatever kind of cutting task you're working on, which I really enjoy being able to do that. Now you've got a little bit of jimping on the top here really not much, very shallow, not carried through to the handle, only on the blade. Doesn't do a crazy amount, I'll be perfectly honest with you, but you don't need it, because again, this is not a terribly hard use knife, and the, your overall ergonomics are great. It is comfortable in ice pick, though I don't know why you'd be needing to do that with this knife, but uh, if you had to, yes, you can use it in ice pick. Um, you have dual thumb studs, so it is ambidextrous in that regard. Flies out like a rocket, regardless of how you open it, whether the thumb studs or with that flipper tab. That assist is, is just great. Uh, and just to show you guys that lock one more time, this is it in the, uh, the not safe position. It's open right now. Close it towards the blade. It is now in the safe position, and as hard as you might try, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, about the only issue I had with this knife when I first got it was this safety. Uh, it was way too stiff to move easily, so I just, it's got a little torque screw on it, loosened that up in, you know, half a second. It's perfect now. I never really used the lock, but I like having access to it, and most importantly, because it, it did work before, it was just too stiff to use with one hand. When I do have a knife with a lock like this, I want to be able to operate it entirely with one hand. I don't want to have to take my other hand and, you know, busy myself trying to do that. So that's nice, is I can fully control this knife one-handed, no problem at all. That's what's important to me. So this perfectly functional. Now, uh, those extra holes that you have drilled here for the reversal pocket clip, I mean, it doesn't make it flow beautifully well, just because now you've got these extra little holes on the frame here. But I can live with that. It's fine, and it gives you the option, so that's great. Um, as far as the lockup goes, show that for you guys. It's rock solid. It's about maybe 30% lockup, which is all you really need. There we go. Maybe a little bit less, maybe closer to 20%. But, I mean, I feel safe doing a spine whack test on that. No blade play out of the box in any direction. Works beautifully well. Now, what are you going to use this knife for? Well, a couple things you need to keep in mind. It's thin. I don't know if it's going to stand up on its own there, but it's not a hugely thick knife. It's just not. So that blade disappears to nothing. You've got a swedge on top that starts about a third of the way into the blade, continues all the way to the tip, and it's nice stylistically and leads to a really, really wicked sharp point on the end. Um, and it does weaken the blade a little bit, but it's not hyper aggressive. So you still have a lot of material right here while still getting the nice stylings of that swedge there. 
Uh, now it's flat ground, so like I said before, you're not losing too much material there if it was a hollow ground knife, so it's still got some strength. I'll tell you though, I'm worried about that tip. I really am. I'm not going to sharpen this. Normally, I would throw it on my Lansky and put a mirror polished razor edge on it, but it's so sharp out of the box and has such a fine tip that I don't want to risk breaking off. I'm just going to leave it, honestly. I'm going to wait until it 100% needs a sharpening. Then I'll <laughs> take the plunge and try and put my own edge onto this guy. But for now, no need. No need at all. It's perfectly functional just as it is. Um, there really isn't much to say about this knife that isn't good. I mean, overall, it's just a beautiful design. You can tell by how many reiterations they have of it and just how quickly these things sell out that it was done really, really well. I mean, just an ideal design by Ken Onion beautifully done. Um, I highly recommend you check out his entire series of Shaw knives. He has the shallot, the leek that we have here, the chive, and uh, the scallion. And I forgot, I think the scallion is the smallest and the chive is the second smallest. Um, I owned the, whichever the smallest is, I owned that with a Damascus blade. Beautiful Damascus, uh, hyper functional, same lock, same speed safe system for the assisted opening works just as well as this, guys. You can't go wrong with a Ken Onion knife, uh, especially his Kershaw, his line with Kershaw. It just works beautifully. Uh, really no complaints about it, guys. Highly, highly recommend you check him out. Get, ooh, gotta be careful there. Uh, get as many of these as you can find. They hold their value really, really well, and they sell out quick when they get a new model, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I need to say about this, guys. I mean, the knife speaks for itself if you look around. You never hear a single bad thing about them, honestly. They're not going to fall apart on you. They're there to last. Uh, and just great, great knife overall. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it here, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Share with your friends. You know, Subscribe to keep up with any new videos I might come out with. Uh, and yeah, have a good one, guys.